Web storage is a new feature in HTML5. At W3 schools, they say, with HTML5, web pages can store data locally within the user's browser. Earlier, this was done using cookies, but web storage is more secure and faster. In this session, we'll take a real look at how this can be implemented in an example for an HTML5 document. So I have Dreamweaver open, I create a new document, and remove the unneeded properties. This is all we need to create a, an HTML5 document. So I'm going to provide my title, the title with HTML5 local storage. And uh, in this example, we create a simple page with a drop-down menu uh, where we select a background image for background color for the page and set it as a default uh, color. And when we close that page and open it back, we have to see again that this background color is still applied to the page using the local storage. So first, I'm going to begin with the HTML uh, tags. We'll give um, my select tag an ID of color list. And we'll have a few options for the colors, three or four options. So white and gray. The next thing is we need to have a button next to this where when clicking on it we'll, uh, we'll have the new uh, local storage and background color submitted. So it's an input uh, tag with the type of button and the value of set background color. So let's see this in the browser. We have the drop down menu with the list of colors and we have the button, but at the moment they don't do anything. So back to Dreamweaver, uh, we're going to create uh, the JavaScript needed uh, in order to, to make the changes. So in the head section, we'll create a new script. And we, we'll have two functions in here, one for loading the background when we, when we first open the page, and the second one is to set the background when we uh, click the button. So uh, let's begin with the set background function. Uh, in order to have a, uh, a local storage uh, variable, all we have to say is local storage dot, and after the dot comes the uh, local storage uh, variable name. In this case, I'm going to, go to give it a name of bg color, and. Uh, Let's assume this is going to take the value from the color list, so document.get element by ID, and we'll give it the name of the uh, select ID, we gave it in here, and we'll get the value. And uh, next, we have to uh, change the background color uh, of the page, so to do this. the style of background color. This is basically changing the style of the page and giving it uh, the background color of the local, local storage variable which is bg color. So right now we have the first function. Uh, let's, let's give it to the, uh, the button in here. So uh, on click The second uh, function we need is ne needed in here is the load background uh, function. And basically this will run uh, wh whenever we open the page. Uh, we have two choices in here. The first, uh, in case the, uh, the background color local storage variable isn't created yet, uh, in this case we'll give it uh, an initialization. Uh, a value of white for as default and then uh, at every every time the page uh, refreshes uh, we'll check uh, for the uh, current bg color variable for the local storage in order to change the drop down menu 
and the background image, uh, background color according to it. So first we check is local storage dot bg color. We need to check its length because this is like a variable, and we need to check if it's greater than zero or not. And uh, the fir for initialization, let's say dot length. equals to zero um, so this is the default option if it's equal to zero then we, we don't have this variable yet so we will say we will define it local storage dot bg color equals to white and this will run only the first time uh, we open this page and later on when we set when we set the color it will never be uh, the case but let's have there's another scenario where we have set an, uh, a color and we have to grab the content of this color so uh, we say documented body of style of background color equals to local storage dot bg color and uh, one other thing we need to check uh, the drop down menu uh, by default it will be uh, the white option but we need to select the color that's uh, already selected for the background uh, color when we open the page so in order to do this all we have to do is to say document dot get element by ID That's it. So uh, one thing remaining is to have the uh, the body tag on the onload event to uh, load the background uh, function uh, at the beginning. So onload equals JavaScript load background, and that's it. Let's see it in the browser. By default, it's white, but when we change it to orange, for example, and set the background color, okay, we have it narrowed in here. Let's check what's wrong. So the mistake was to the get element by ID. The the D in ID have to be uh, has to be uh, in lower case. And there was another mistake. We were having the doc type like this, but we have we had to define HTML in here as well. So uh, we'll go back to the browser and refresh the page, and we'll see now if we change this to gray and set the background color, it will be changed uh, accordingly and the same thing applies to the purple or any other color now let's close the browser and um, navigate to the source files and we'll open this page right now from here and you can see this is still in purple because it's remain re remaining the the last color so basically that's it uh, i hope you enjoyed it and uh, this will be the the replacement for uh, cookies in the future when all browsers uh, start to support HTML5.